In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of conditional logic by showing you how you can use if, else, and else if statements to solve a wide range of programming problems. Unlike the previous video, which was basically looking at conditional statements from a 10,000 foot level, here we're actually going to get down and dirty and figure out how and when we need to use if, else, and else if statements. There are basically four different patterns when it comes to using if, else, and else if statements. The first one is your standard if statement with nothing else. So in English, all that's really happening is do this if it's true, otherwise do nothing. So if this condition is true, execute this code, otherwise this code never executes and nothing happens in your program. So here's an example of a program that needs to do that. So we're going to write a program that gets a cadet's USAFA class here, and we're going to output a message if they're a freshman. So I just happen to have Thony up and running here, so we can go ahead and try this program right off the bat. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is write my logic design. So the first step is going to be get the cadets USAFA class here. And then the next step is going to be to determine if the cadet is a freshman. All right. So let's actually code this. Getting the class here is fairly straightforward. This is, you know, one of the first things we learned in Python. Should be just make a variable called class here. And the class here is traditionally an integer. So I'm going to go ahead and just get an input and then set it equal to an integer so that we can convert it and store it in this variable. That's simple enough. Now we need to determine what type of pattern to use. Um, it's pretty obvious here because as we were describing a logic design, we used the word if. So here I can just say if my class year is equal to 2024. And remember, oh, yeah, this is a common mistake, right? Like if it's one equals, you're just assigning it. So comparisons are two equals. And then don't forget the colon at the end. So this is saying if the class year is equal to 2024. And you'll know that you did the syntax correctly because when you press enter, Thony knows and automatically indents it for you. And I can just print out a message saying, uh, you are a freshman. I can go ahead and test it now. So I should be able to press play. And then I should be able to type 2024, you are a freshman. And if I press play and I do something else, 2023, they are not freshmen. So nothing prints out there. So this is one example of how you can use if when if you only have a situation where you just want something to happen if it's true, but nothing to happen otherwise. The second pattern we want to share with you is the if else statement. And in English, all we're saying is execute this code if it's true, execute this other set of code if it's false. So again, if this condition is true, we'll execute the top, but not the bottom code. But if this condition is false, we'll execute the bottom and not the top. So let's see an example where we're actually doing this. So here we're writing a program where we get a cadet's class here and prints out separate messages if they're a freshman or an upperclassman. Okay, this should be very similar to you because in the previous video, we basically built a program that printed out different things based off the age. It's the same idea here. So in Thony, I already have the code that gets the class here and compares to see if they are uh, a freshman. So it's checking to see the class here. And let's assume for right now that the only people who are going to use this program are people at USAFA. So if they're not 2024, then they are most likely an upperclassman. So if this is the case, print out they're a freshman. Otherwise, or else, and that's the keyword, and don't forget the colon, we'll print out you are an upperclassman. All right. So now when I press play, I should be able to see this. Um, we're going to go and type 2023. You're an upperclassman. And then if I type 2024, you are a freshman. So we've tested both branches. So we made sure that this, this prints out only when it's supposed to, and this prints out only when it's supposed to. So congrats. That's two down. For our third pattern, we're going to introduce a new word in Python. So up until now, we've talked about if, and we've talked about else. And now we're going to introduce a new word called else if. So in the if, else, if, else pattern, what we're basically doing is we have a bunch of different paths that we can go down. And we're trying to determine which one to take. So here we have if this condition is true, execute this code. Else if this other condition is true, go ahead and execute this code. And we can have as many of these elif, which stands for else if, commands as we want. And then this final else here is optional, but it's basically a catch-all. We can say, if this isn't true, and this isn't true, and all of my other conditions aren't true, then finally do this. 
So this is very similar to the previous pattern. Now we can just have more than two branches. Now we can have as many branches as we want. So let's see an example of this type of program. Here we're going to write a program where we get a cadet's percentage grade and we're going to print out their corresponding letter grade. So we have to think about if their grade is greater than a 90, print an A. If it's greater than a 80, print a B. If it's greater than a 70, print a C. That sort of thing. So we're going to go ahead in Thony and write that. So the first thing we need to do, so this is like a very high level logic design, get the grade from the user and then determine if the grade is an A, B, C, etc. So the first step, we're going to get the grade. Uh, that should just be a floating point value. So I'll just go ahead and say uh, float input. And the reason for that is you can have an 87.6% if you want to. Now we need to determine what grade they get. So one way to do this is to say, well, if the grade is greater than or equal to 90, then I know it's an A, right? So I could print out an A. And I know that there are a lot of other grades, so I need to figure out how to do that. So one way we could do it is if it's not greater than 90, we could put an elif and we could say, well, if the grade is not greater than a 90, but it is greater than or equal to an 80, it's a B. And we can do the same thing over and over. So elif the grade is greater than or equal to 70, we could print a C, else if, see how I can do as many of these as I want. And then that's a D. And then, so if it's not an A, if it's not a B, it's not a C, and it's not a D, then your grade is an F, right? So then I can put one final else statement here, and I can say print, and it's an F. And fortunately for all of you, you're paying attention to this video, so you're all going to get A's and B's in the class, but, you know, we can have code that catches all the cases here. So I can press play, I can do a grade, let's say um, 76, that should be a C. So the way to properly test this, right, is to say, I'm going to test each grade, 91, 85, just make sure that my code can print off all of these, um, we already did 70, so 65, right, and then maybe let's say you get a 50%, that's an F. So we've actually tested all these branches, and now we know that our code works. For our fourth and final pattern, we're actually just going to show you a situation where you may not need to use if or else or else if you just might need a lot of separate if statements and when you look at this you know abstractly like oh you could have this if statement and then you could have this other if statement it's kind of hard to understand when you might use it so let's show you an example of when you would need to have separate if statements so here's a program where you need to get a GPA MPA and PEA from the user and determine if the user is on the uh, Dean's Commandant's and or athletic directors list the important thing to see about this problem is that your, whether or not you're on the Dean's list or the Commandant's list, those are independent things. There's nothing about the Dean's list that tells you if you're on the Commandant's list. Same thing with the Athletic Director's list. So these are independent uh, if statements that you can build for it. So let's show you how we would actually do that. So uh, again, I'm going to build a quick logic design. I'm going to get the GPA, MPA, and PEA. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to say my GPA is, I think it's just a float input. Yeah, because you can have a GPA like 3.5, um, MPA, same thing. And notice how I'm not actually copying and pasting code. Um, I find that copying and pasting code sounds like a great idea, but then you also copy and paste all your errors. Now we need to determine if you're on the Dean's, Commandant's, or Athletic Director's lists. I'm sorry, my it is going to kill me if I don't do that. All right, so uh, <laughs> let's check. The first thing we should check is the Dean's list. So we can see, check to see if we are on the Dean's list. So if the GPA is greater than or equal to a 3.0, then I can say a Dean's list, All right? Now let's check to see if we're in the Commandant's list. And again, remember that your GPA has nothing to do with whether or not you're in the Commandant's list, so it's not an else if situation. It's another separate if. If my MPA is greater than 3.0, I can print comment dance list. And again, the same thing, right? Uh, with the PEA. See, we are on the athletic director's list. If the PEA is greater than 3.0, we can print athletic director's list. So when I press play here, 
and I get a GPA. So let's say it's, I'm a I'm I'm like a stellar cadet, 3.5 all around. If I do that, all three of them will print out, right? Because first it'll check to see if this is true, and it'll print it out. Then it will check to see if this is true, and it'll print it out. And then it will check to see if this is true, and it'll print it out. So you have the dean's list, commandant's list, and the athletic director's list, right? But also, if I happen to, let's say that um, I'm good in class, but I'm just so-so in my uh, MPA, and you're like uh, Major DeFreitas when he took the PFT, uh, like there, right, for my PEA. So there you can see that only Dean's List printed out. And again, the reason that we have separate if statements is that there is nothing about your GPA that affects whether or not you're on the Commandant or Athletic Director's List, and the same thing for the other ones. So in this case, we just happen to be checking three separate things. For my final trick today, we're going to talk about nested if statements. Up until now, we really had only just a little bit of code inside each of our if statements. You know, so for example, if your age is greater than 50, print age is just a number. But you can put as much code as you want, and more importantly, you can put other things inside of an if statement, such as another if statement. So here's an example where we are looking to check to see if x is less than 1,000, and if it is, inside here we check to see if it's 100, 200, that sort of thing. So we have an outer if statement, which has this if and this else, and inside we have an inner if statement where we check to see the specific value of x. And important to remember that it's not just one level, you can have an, another if statement, another if statement, you can do it as many times as you need to. And if it's getting a little bit confusing of why you might want to do that, I'm going to show you an example problem where we do exactly that. So here in this problem, what we're doing is we're getting an x and a y coordinate from the user, and we're trying to determine what quadrant that coordinate is in. For those of you who are a little bit rusty in geometry, uh, I put the coordinate system over here. Remember that when x is greater than 0 and y is greater than 0, you're in quadrant 1. If x is less than 0 and y is greater than 0, then you are in quadrant 2, and so on and so forth. So let's actually try to code that using nested if statements. So again, we're going to build our logic design. The first thing I'm going to do is get x and y from the user. And the way that we do that is just straight up uh, getting x and getting y. And we're going to assume for this example that x and y could be floating point numbers, so 3.7 and 2.5. Now we're going to check to see if you are in the uh, what quadrant you're in. So if we were to look back at that diagram, what we would see is that on the right hand side, if x is greater than 0, so I could go ahead and just say like, if x is greater than 0, then y, what axis you're in depends on what y is. So for example, if y happens to be greater than 0, then we would print out that you're in quadrant 1. Otherwise, like else if y is less than 0, we would print out that you're in quadrant 4. And there's one other case, right? If y is greater than 0, if y is less than 0, but what if y is 0? And that turns out you're not in any quadrant, right? You, you would be on an axis. So you can see here how we might build an, a, a, a nested if structure to determine if I'm in quadrant 1 and 4. The same thing could be done here for um, else if L x is less than 0, now we need to do all the tests to see if y is greater than 0, then you would be in quadrant, I think it's uh, 2. Um, else if y is less than 0, you'd be in quadrant 3. And again, if you're equal to 0, you could print on an axis. And finally, so now we've checked all these, the cases where x is greater than 0, if x is less than 0, and if it's not greater than 0 or less than 0, x must be 0, so then you would print out on an axis. So there's a lot of steps going on here, and you notice that when I was describing this, I was basically saying if x is greater than 0 and y is greater than 0, then you could print this out. In the following lessons, we're going to teach you about uh, the words and and or and how we can use them in conditional logic. And that's going to make it so that this type of code we, is a little bit easier to write. But for this lesson, we want you to experiment with this to make sure you understand how you can construct if statements and how you can embed them inside of each other. 
So hopefully, if you got to the end of this lesson, I know it was a little long, uh, you have a better sense of how conditional flow works. You should now be able to understand how to uh, write if statements, how to use else and else if when appropriate. You, we showed you four patterns, and most importantly, we showed you how we can have an if and put ifs inside of it. So there's a lot of skills here, and you're going to have lots of time to practice it. So give it a try. Let us know if you need help, and thanks for watching.